Welcome to MSM Solutions YouTube channel. Quality systems, quality people. We have spoken about certified reference material and reference material. These are used as quality control standards. But what we actually do with these quality control standards, we plot quality control charts. So in this presentation, we'll be talking about quality control charts. So what are QC charts? quality control charts. These are sometimes also called SPC charts or even Levy Jennings charts. SPC is statistical process control. This is a method of quality control which employs statistical method to monitor and control a process. These statistical process controls were first pioneered by Walter A. Sherwood at Bell Laboratories in early 1920s. In the lab, we give a description of a Levy Jennings chart, which is a graph that quality control data is plotted on to give a visual indication whether a laboratory test is working well. We sometimes talk about in control and out of control. The distance from the mean is measured in standard deviations. It is named after Stanley Levy and E.R. Jennings. These are two pathologists who suggested that as Sherwood individual control charts could be used in clinical studies and this was back in the 1950s. So as you can see these all stems from the Sherwood um, charts which is a SPC chart. So there are different types of QC chart or these SPC charts so let's just discuss just uh, a basics or maybe common ones. One of the graphs that are used uh, in uh, monitoring uh, QCs as um, a Q sum chart. This is a cumulative sum chart. I will be giving a very basic explanation of the chart, although sometimes computing it can get complicated. But what a Q sum chart is, it monitors deviation of individual samples or subgroups from the target value. What you plot is the cumulative sum, which is the sum of these deviations over time. This is essentially used to measure and monitor if your process is drifting away from the mean. Although not really frequently used as a Sherwood chart, which I will explain in the next slide, but this is designed to, to detect small shifts in the process average from the targeted value and it has been said that it can actually detect these ch changes faster than a general individual or moving average uh, Sherwood chart. On the other hand we have Sherwood charts. With these we have two types. There's the individual chart and there's a moving range chart. So the individual chart displays individual measured values. This is quite a common one that everybody normally uses. And then you have a moving range chart which displays the difference from one point to the next. And with both charts, uh, uh, with Schuer's charts in general, the normal distribution is not assumed, not required to calculate your control limit. So depending on which one you would uh, plot, if it's individual, it will be individual values of X or Y or whatever that, that what you're measuring. And with the moving range, it will be the difference as it moves from one point to the other. So as mentioned uh, before, in the lab, we we'll talk mainly of Levy Jennings charts. These are a special case of your common Sherwood um, X chart, as you've seen. And as I've mentioned, they were developed by two pathologists who were using these graphs in a clinical study. So what you have in here is you will have a mark which represents your mean, you know, your expected result. And then plot different QC values every day over time um, relative to these means. What you also have there is you will have other lines across, you know, there may be one, two or even three standard deviation. And as you plot these different values, you will then see how far they are from the mean so are they one standard deviation away two standard deviation or three standard deviation and you will then decide on your level you know what is within limits and what is outside limits normally your two standard deviation limit is seen as your warning limit while your three standard deviation limit is your action limit 
with others you'd find that the one is like your one standard deviation is the warning and the two standard deviation is the action meaning that anything outside the two standard deviation is seen as out of control so normally what we have if you also see that levy jennings charts are interpreted using westgard rules in the last slide we'll talk about westgard rules another thing you'll see in this picture is a normal distribution chart so essentially a levy jennings chart is a, a sideways um, normal distribution curve in the previous uh, slide i mentioned that normal distribution is not assumed for she would charts but when you look at levy jennings chart specifically you'll see that because we're dealing with the the standard deviation you know we're assuming normal distribution so when you're looking at your 1s um, standard deviation so you will say 68 percent of your data would fall within 1s when you look at 2s it will be 95 percent of your data that falls in there hence in most lab we'll talk about your 95 percent confidence limit so you're working within two standard deviation limits and then with your 3s which is your extreme case where 99.7 percent of your data should fall you know so most of the time by the time we get there we have a lot of um we've allowed a lot of points you know relative to if we were to be at a 95 uh, confidence limit but as the difference and specifically to this is that we do assume normal distribution hence we calculate our limits based on standard deviation so what are waste guard rules Whiskers rule are multi-rule QC rules to help analyze whether or not an article run is in control or out of control. They are a set of statistical patterns, each being unlikely to occur by random variability, thereby raising a suspicion of faulty accuracy or precision of the measurement. So the first thing you realize is that this error is random. So automatically when you get a failed QC result, you will just quickly repeat the run just to make sure that there was nothing um random about that if you still get a, a failed qc you'll then just analyze the results and over time as you're running this qc you plot this data and based on what you see from the results you'll then just see that do i have an accuracy or a precision problem and then do a proper root cause analysis so that you can get a corrective action what this procedure does it uses five different control rooms to judge the acceptability of an article run the advantage of using a multi-rule QC procedures is that the false rejections are kept on a minimum, you know, uh, a minimum, a low, while ma still maintaining quite high error detection system. So let's look at this chart and see what does this mean. You have a QC, you read the results, you're looking now at the data. The first thing you're going to ask yourself is, remember you have a mean and you've got one standard deviation, two standard and three standard deviation. You then work around those limits you then look at your the number that you're looking at you say is this outside my 2s uh, limit if no then it means it's within your control so it's in control and therefore you can accept the result right if the answer is yes it is outside my 2s the next question becomes is this outside the 3s which is now the action limit if yes it's outside the 3s then you reject the run you know so this is the first violation so you reject the run because it is outside your 3s the second part you ask yourself is this remember you said it is within um it's outside 2s but now is it within 3s and you say yes it's it's, it's, it's within the 3s but then you look at the second rule you then say is there another one so the 2 2s rule is that is there another value that was in the same range like within that 2s if yes there was another one that was then it's a 2s rule violation and you reject the run so you essentially have two points that are between 2 and 3s that's a 2s rule violation the next step becomes okay so if you, if the answer is then no it's not there's no two values you then look remember you now comparing this first value to either a previous value or the next value you then look is it now breaking the r4s rule what does the r4s mean it means when you compare this number with the previous number the previous number was probably a at a minus 
to standard deviation so it was on the negative and this one is now on the positive 2s so the two values are four standard deviations apart because the other one is on minus two the other one is on plus two so if that is yes then you reject the run as well okay so but if it's not and then it means now you then go to to the next one say no it doesn't violate so you don't have the two values literally going across the two um a warning um warning lines you then look at these numbers but when you look at this one now you look at the pattern so you look at within those values the last four so comparing to the one you're looking is the four values in the same one within one is so there's four numbers that are within the one is um control the minus one is and if that's the case then you reject the, the run as well because then now this is the violation of the four one is um uh, violation but then the next step is if it's not and then you're now going to look at the 10 values so with the 10 x violation is that you have 10 consecutive values falling on one side of the mean that is a 10x violation and with the 10x you sometimes can have modification of that where you look at the 8x and the 12x as well you know so meaning you have 10 points that are sitting in the same side of a mean consecutively and then that's also another so that you also have to reject but if none of those you've been saying no 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 then you can accept the run and report the results so in this um slide i basically show almost every single rule that i've spoken about but the, this is a better graphic representation of all those so now you can see that what was the one where you had one point that was outside the the three s uh, so it's outside the three s limit and therefore it's a violation the second one was the two s where you have two points between two and three s's third one was the r4s rule violation where you had one point on the plus two x standard deviation and the other one was on the minus standard deviation so four standard deviation across the next one becomes the four points and and then the last one and, and then the next one is the 10x where you have 10 points in the same side of the mean the last one which we didn't touch on in the previous slide is the 7t uh, rule violation so with this one is when you have seven points either in an increasing or decreasing pattern that's also a violation so you can see that there is a trend there's either an increasing trend or a decreasing trend and there's seven points just constantly in going in one direction you know of of of, of your mean and that is a, a a 70 violation and that's also showing you that there's something wrong with your system you know so most of the time if it's decreasing all the time you might find that maybe your QC strength is depreciating, you know, maybe this, you need to now prepare a fresh batch, you know, or something else is wrong with their instrument or something is getting dirty. Or if it's increasing, there might be something else that's causing it to increase, whether it's contamination or something else that's happening there. But you need to investigate because you should not be having um, either one of these rule violations. So you normally, you would plot your QCs and monitor them. So the whole point of using a QC is that so that it tells you what's happening with your process. So there's no really a point of view every single day reading your QC, but then you don't look at the pattern. This is what we call trend analysis. If you don't look at the pattern and say, what is the trend of this QC? What information is it giving me? Because that is the main basis of using this QC is so that it can give you indication of what's going on between your, with your accuracy and your precision of your system and then be able to act accordingly to correct whatever that could be um, uh, not correct. So when you look at just basic indications of these rules, so if you were to look at, okay, which violations am I having? And you wanted to know that, do I actually have a random error or a systematic error so that you're able to do a proper corrective action? This is what normally happens, but it is not a rule. It's just a basic indication. Random errors are usually indicated by the 13S or the, 4, the R4S rules. Whereas systematic errors are more likely to indicate 2S, 41S's, or the 10S. So those are when you look at systematic errors. 
you know so so that is what um, we mean so we think so with the one s is it's a random error and you can and with the four s's it's also a random error but when it comes to the others where as you can see these are more patterns where you have the same thing happening over time remember with two two s's is that you have two values at the same between the two and the three s's the four is when you have four numbers and the 10 is also 10 values on the same side of the mean so those are more systematic so obviously now we've touched on random and systematic errors. So what we need to then define is that what exactly are these and how do we actually manage them? So in the next video, we will be looking at defining and actually quantifying what exactly are random and systematic errors. Thanks for watching.